What is going on everyone and welcome to another tier list video. Today we are doing a tier list of the vouchers and very quickly we're going to go over the criteria. So basically I'm judging this based off of all 15 decks across all of the stakes white through gold how useful each one of these vouchers are and i'm also taking a little bit of consideration into challenges as well as going for you know personal best and high scores this is how i'm approaching all my tier list tuesdays and that's how i'm going to be approaching these vouchers so without further ado let's jump into it first we have the overstock voucher which adds one card slot available in the shop and for me this is very close to a must buy but i'm going to put it in you know, I am going to put in a must buy. I think adding that card to the slot it, to the shop is so ridiculously valuable because so many times are you just searching for those few jokers that you need to either complete your run, complete your personal high score, or just get through gold stake. I mean, how many times have you been playing on higher stake difficulties and you just have to hold the R button over and over and over again because you make it through, you know, one and a half antis and you just haven't gotten a joker yet. Overstock is immensely helpful in this regard. That one card adds up very quickly over the course of a run, especially if you get it early. So it is definitely one of my favorite vouchers in the game. I think it's actually extraordinarily valuable. I mean, when you think about how much a reroll costs in $5, the fact that you're able to basically get a half of reroll for free, it pays for itself in about four rounds um, in my estimation. So very good voucher. And then we have Overstock Plus, which adds another card to the shop. And I'm going to put this in Goodbye. And that's only because you already have to have Overstock for Overstock Plus to show up as a voucher. And if you have three cards, I think you're usually in a pretty good spot for the shop. And you don't necessarily need that fourth card. I still think it's a good buy. I still think, you know, it's worthy to spend the $10 on. But I want to put this in Must Buy. I'm going to put this one in Goodbye. And we're going to move on to the next one. Next is Clearance Sale. I'm going to put this in goodbye. So there's a ton of benefits to clearance sale. You have 25% off all the shops, all the jokers, the tarot cards, everything. Everything's cheaper. It makes it easier to buy. It's, it's a pretty darn good voucher. Some may argue it should be in the must buy. My only gripe with it is it also makes all your jokers less valuable. So when you go to sell joker, it's scaled to be the same equivalent as it would be in the shop. So it would be really cool, and I think it would turn to a must-buy for me if, you know, you could buy and then sell. But I also understand what local thunk the developer was trying to avoid there where you could literally buy and sell and just make free money. Um, all in all, it's a pretty good buy. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I mean, there are stakes you get to. I believe it's orange stake when the booster packs start becoming inflated as you go farther and farther along in the game. This can bring that inflation down. But at the same time, I don't think it's necessarily needed for a run. I honestly think you get a little bit more value out of just seeing that third card in the shop than you do from having cheaper shops. And then we have liquidation, which makes everything 50% off. Very much the same thought process. I do think if you have this one, it's not a bad idea to add liquidation because now you're getting to the point where basically packs are like $2, tarot cards are a dollar, plant cards are a dollar. It kind of makes things ridiculously cheap. And it's good to add on. Um, I would say you still get a big benefit from just adding that extra 25% on top of what you already have from clearance sale. Next, we have Hone, which of course improves the chances of foil, holographic, and polychrome jokers. And if you saw my consumable card tier list, you're probably not surprised by this, but I do not think this is worth it as a card whatsoever. I just don't think poly, or um, excuse me, Foil or holographic are really that valuable of bumps. Polychrome is absolutely worth it. Getting that extra 1.5 mol is great, but it's still a very low chance that you're going to see any polychromes even when you get hone. I think if you included negatives being upped, the amount of negatives you would see in the shop, I would move this to mid. But the fact that it only can improve foil, holographic, and polychrome, I don't care. I don't really need the 10 extra dollars. I don't care if my Joker has holographic or my Joker has foil. Yes, it's nice. It can be a difference maker once in a great while, but it's just not that great of a deal. And again, it doesn't increase it enough for polychromes, the one specific boost that I would be looking for, for me to spend the $10 on it. And the same goes for glow up, which basically increases the rate at four times. Again, that's great. That's amazing. But 
look, it's not enough for me to spend, at this point, you've spent $20 on trying to improve your jokers, which, by the way, are going to be more expensive. And as you get in the higher stakes, you don't always have the economy to even spend on a polychrome holographic or foil joker. That's a whole nother thing I didn't even touch on is I don't think foil and holographic are that worth it. And it increases the prices of the joker. Most of the times, I'd rather just have the jokers at their base price without the foil or holographic. Next, we're moving into reroll surplus make rerolls cost two dollars less i'm actually gonna put this in mid i don't buy this enough and i think it can be quite valuable and it pays for itself rather quickly if you were going to reroll what is it making it two dollars less so five shops boom it's already paid for itself in the same uh area I believe that reroll gut is also mid where at this point you're rerolling for a dollar i mean honestly if you've already spent on reroll i think reroll Gut makes sense to put in the good buys because now you can reroll three times in the shop once for a dollar, once for two dollars, once for three dollars, and that's only six dollars to see three whole new shops. It's pretty incredible. So, these two together, this is one of the first where I think you know the second version of the voucher, once you purchase the first one, improves it exponentially. I think gain this first voucher, I, I tend to skip it because I'm worried I'm not going to get the second. But if you have the first and that second one comes along, you absolutely should be buying it. It's a ridiculously good value at that point. Um, all in all, though, the reason I'm not going to put these in must buys and good buys or the best vouchers or anything like that is rerolls are really not a cost efficient way to look at the shop. Of course, these make it more cost efficient, but you really shouldn't be rerolling that much. You should more so save your money. Really the best way to approach your money is to allow it to accumulate interest instead of spending it on rerolls, in my opinion. So again, while it makes it more viable, it's still not necessary. Next we have Crystal Ball, and I'm putting this in borderline must buys, but I'm gonna put in good buys. It's very good to have that third slot available in your consumable slots. And the big reason here is when you're buying tarot packs and let's say you have one tarot card, you're absolutely keeping like a glass and then you get an emperor. Well, you can't pop that emperor until you use your justice card or same thing with the planet cards. You can't pop that tarot card to create two planet cards because you only have one slot available because you're carrying another tarot card or another planet card for whatever reason. Having that third spot really opens up the possibilities. I think it's extraordinarily valuable. I think there's a lot to play around there when you have three spots especially when you take into consideration maybe you're waiting to pop a chariot until you see a full so that way you're gonna have two chariots in the future stuff like that i think it's pretty good buy for ten dollars it's not always necessary maybe even borderline mid but we're going to move on to its you know powered up version of omen globe which is very interesting it allows spectral cards to appear in arcana packs and well you all know my feelings on spectral cards. They're fantastic. They're the best consumable cards in the game. They don't appear enough. And the fact that you, you have no control over which ones appear, because there are spectral cards I, I don't really care for and I don't think are big deals, it doesn't add a lot for the $10 you are spending. Now, if Omen Globe did what the Ghost deck did and allowed spectral cards to appear in the shop, I would absolutely immediately move this <laughs> into one of the best vouchers. So I understand why Local Thunk hasn't done this yet, because... You know, it, we're talking about giving it a very extraordinarily powerful effect. But at the same time, I think right now it's a little underpowered. I would almost say it's not even worth. In fact, I am. I'm going to put it in not worth. I don't think you should be spending $10 to have the occasional spectral card in your Arcana pack. I really don't. I think we should add maybe there's a X percentage chance of a spectral card appearing in the shop and then... I would move this maybe into mid or goodbye because all of a sudden you can put spectral cards in your consumable slot and that's a really good um you know uh, thing to have especially when we start talking about perco which is one of the legendary jokers that can make negative consumable cards next we have telescope and uh some of you might be surprised by this i'm gonna put it in goodbye i actually think telescope is quite worthy of buying especially if you're playing a flush or high card build or you're playing like a two pair build that you're using a lot or a full house build, the fact that you're able to always get the planet card you need from those planet packs is extraordinarily valuable in my opinion. Being able to scale up that hand really quickly, especially with high card builds, which are very common once you get past the middling stakes and difficulties, um, you know, this, this can be a lifesaver and it can really expedite your run. It can make things a little bit of a breeze at higher stakes. So 
I think Telescope, my, I myself underrate it a bit, and the community, we may underrate it quite a bit because leveling up those hands is important. It's a way of getting base mole, and then you can focus completely on maybe chips or X mole in your Joker spots, and all of a sudden you don't need additive mole. And a big part of that can be Telescope. Now, however, I will say Observatory is going to go into literally hurts. And let me explain this. <clears throat> Unless you have Showman, which allows cards to appear in the shop and in packs that you already have, Observatory is going to hurt you in the long run. So let's say you're playing a flush build and you got Observatory right away. Well, what do you do? You're like, oh, I'm going to go put Jupiter in my consumable slot. I'm going to hold it there. So every time I play my flush, I get times 1.5 mult. That's fantastic. That is. It's, it's a good thing. However, you are never going to ever <laughs> level up your flush ever again. That's because Jupiter will not populate any more in the store. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe this is how it works. I'm, I've tried double checking this. The, it, in, in my opinion, that's going to hurt you. So there's no point to have this voucher because there's no point to hold a planet card up in your consumable slot and you no longer being able to level up that hand. Maybe, maybe if this voucher comes available in like the seventh or eighth ante and you're gonna get that planet card in the shop because by the way, you can't move a planet card from a pack to your consumable slot. This has to appear in the shop, the planet card that you wanna move over there. It can be worth it, but it's such an extreme circumstance and I would argue for most players who want to utilize this, they're going to put it up in that consumable slot and carry it throughout the game and then forget to level up that hand that they're using a ton of. And it, it's going to cost them in the long run. So Observatory, I think for most players, can be hurtful. Um, if you really understand how this voucher works, I guess I would put it not worth it. But it, it's borderline, you know, a negative voucher for you. The next voucher we have is Grabber, and this is immediately going into one of the best vouchers. Having one extra hand to play is incredible in so many facets. So first of all, just generally having that extra hand can save your runs, especially as you move up in difficulties and you need every single hand. Or let's say you face the water uh, boss blind, which gets rid of all your discards, and you only have the hands you have to play. This is a life-saving voucher. But on top of all that, the great thing about adding hands is you're adding economy. So let's say you're able to one-shot a lot of these blinds. Well, when you add one extra hand, you are adding basically a dollar of economy every single round that you even have one hand remaining. If you have zero hands remaining, you probably would have lost without this voucher. So all in all, after 10 rounds, this voucher is also paid for itself on top of the fact that it's extraordinarily helpful for just passing things. And along those same lines, I would put... You know, it's a powered up version, Nacho, T <laughs> I love the name, Nacho Tong, right up there with it because adding one extra hand, same exact thing. It's going to pay for itself within 10 rounds if you have 10 left, but it also can be a lifesaver in many occasions. Right below that in must buys, we're going to put the discard version of Wasteful. Adding an extra discard is extremely helpful, not as helpful as Grabber because you're not getting a huge economic benefit, but what you do get is a card that not only allows you to discard to search for the hand you want, but there are many jokers that benefit from having extra discards, like Delayed Gratification or Banner. And with Banner, if you're able to get this extra discard, you're just gaining an extra 40 chips. It's, it's very useful and very helpful with all different kinds of builds. High card builds where you're not even using discards because maybe you have a Banner or Delayed, or you know when you're searching for that specific hand and you have to actually use those discards. This uh, voucher is very valuable in that way. And I'm just going to put its powered up version in the same exact tier because, you know, it's one more discard for another $10. Oftentimes, it is very much worth it. I would say you probably need it less than the first one. But as we move to higher stakes and you have less and less discards, it can be just as valuable. Moving on, we have Tarot Merchant, which I'm going to put in some of the best vouchers. And let me explain myself. I know I just complain about not getting enough jokers in the shop. However, tarot cards are absolutely the next best thing you can get. And oftentimes, shaping your deck once you have a few of those good jokers is what is necessary. Especially in those, you know, I wouldn't say the super high-end difficulties, but the middle difficulties is what you're looking for. And of course, I am taking into account a little bit challenge decks and personal bests, which tarot cards are a big, big, big part of. So having those extra tarot cards in the shop, I think is extraordinarily valuable. I may be 
overestimating a bit and i would have no problem with someone putting it in a must buy i may even see some arguments for putting in good buys but for me personally the amount of times i've used it i would put in the best vouchers i'm starting to use it more and more and more and at this point basically every time i see it i grab it because i want to see those tarot cards in the shop being able to put them in your consumable card slot and have them going into a round is invaluable especially when you're looking at cards like a death or justice where they can save your run if you don't draw the cards you need or you need those extra points from the glass card and along those lines having a tarot card appear four times as likely is pretty solid but i'm going to put it in probably good buys because at this point maybe it's too many tarot cards and this is really if you're just going for personal best or you absolutely have your joker set and you just need tarot cards I think two times is a good happy medium. I think four times is more for specific situations that you're going for something. Definitely not a bad voucher, but I'm not using it quite as often um, as just the normal tarot merchant. Next, you know, similar to tarot merchant, we have planet merchant and it's adding twice as likely chance of planet card showing up in the shop. This is gonna go into literally hurts. Let me explain why. I do not want planet cards populating my shop when I am looking for jokers or tarot cards. It is that simple. The only time I would be looking for this voucher is if I have Astronomer and I have, um, what's the name, Constellation, which adds molt for every planet card I've used or all my planet cards are free. Then I can see an argument for getting this voucher. But besides having those two hyper-specific jokers, there's no reason to want a bunch of planet cards in your shop. Even if you're going after your high card build and you want to get a lot of you know base malt and base score for your high cards there's no guarantee that the high card is going to be the one popular in your shop nine times out of ten you're going to get a playing card you don't even want and you much rather have seen a different tarot card or a different joker card it is just not useful and of course plant tycoon it does the same thing except on a crazier scale so i'm going to put it in literally hurts i mean Maybe if for some reason you bought the first, there's more of a valid reason why you'd want the second. And I should put it not worth, but just in general, they go hand in hand. They're going into literally hurts. It's not worth it. And I am a strong believer in you don't want planet cards populating your shop. Now, if they're populating booster packs, that's one thing. And once you get in the orange stake, which again is only, there's only two stakes which utilize orange stake, orange and gold. Yes, booster packs become very expensive later in the game, and maybe you wanted planet cards to populate in the shop, but again, we're talking about two two of the stakes, just two of them, at the very tippity top, and even then, I don't think you want those over just getting some good old classic jokers in that shop. Moving on to seed money, we're going to put it in must buys. It is extraordinarily valuable. I do not buy this voucher enough, and I absolutely should. Having a solid economy is really a good base for any run low difficulty high difficulty personal best challenges you want to manage your economy well and seed money allows you to build up that economy quickly especially once you get a good base of jokers through the first few antis in general you want to be buying this early if it shows up a little bit later in your game maybe you don't need it at that point so that's why i'm not going to put in the best vouchers but there is a time and a place absolutely for this and money tree i'm actually putting it into mid i see why you would use it especially you have a joker like the bull or bootstraps but those are hyper specific other than that i don't really need my economy to be this insane so for you know money tree to be fully utilized i already have to have a metric kind of ton of money in my bank if i have a metric ton of money i don't need money tree if that makes sense like sure why not spend the ten dollars if you have it but in general, that $10 might be better spent just rerolling a couple times in the shop. Um, the one thing I will say is it pays for itself very quickly because if you have that money, this is a hard one for me to rate because it's so situational. If it pops up, you should know when and why to use it. But my biggest thing is I much rather have any of these jokers pop up over Money Tree at that point, even with my economy kind of blowing up. So. I'm going to put it in mid for now. I kind of explained myself. I expect the comments to maybe be upset about this one, but we'll see how people treat it. The next one is going to be very hard to rate, and that is blank voucher. I'm going to put it in not worth, and let me explain. So blank voucher's only purpose is to allow the possibility of getting antimatter in the shop. And antimatter is obviously one of the best vouchers, 
but this is really weird because I almost want to put in not worth because I'm saying it's not worth buying blank, so antimatter would never appear. But of course, if it does appear, go ahead, buy it, gain an extra joker slot is incredible. In general, the fact that you're paying $10 for a chance for another voucher to appear in the shop when there's so many options, I just personally don't think it's worth it. And it, you're not gaining enough time for blank voucher to be worth it at $10. Of course, if you have the money, you're, you're, you're rolling in the dough, spend it because getting that antimatter voucher will be huge for you know personal deaths or just completing the stake what have you but nine times out of ten you're not going to have that much money that you could just throw away ten dollars like that for a very rng heavy roll that's the odds are not in your favor so all in all i would say it's not worth it to go for blink voucher of course if you already did and antimatter shows up i mean that was the whole reason you spent the money on blank voucher. Grab antimatter right then and there. Get that extra joker slot and uh, see where you can go from there. Next, we have magic trick. And this is going to go into literally hurts. The only time magic trick is worth it and it is worth populating your shop with just normal playing cards would be if you have hologram and you just want to skyrocket hologram into an extreme joker. That's going to be like time seven or eight mole. Then use it. If you don't have hologram, there's no point to populate your shop with random cards because the chance that those cards are going to be useful and ones that you actually want is so unbelievably low. There will be never a reason to spend $10 on filling up slots in your shop with just plain old playing cards. Now, along those lines, if for some reason you bought Magic Trick, then I see the argument for Illusion and I'd put it all the way in good vibes because I can see this is the only way of making magic trick valuable outside of hologram is the fact that all of a sudden you can have enhanced cards you can have polychrome foil holographic cards you can have sealed cards those are all really really good things and it's making magic trick worth it so if for some reason you bought this yes illusion becomes a good maybe even must buy because you bought this one in the first place but all in all avoid this <laughs> avoid this voucher don't buy magic trick in the first place again if you have hologram I'll accept it. Go ahead and do it. It's actually a pretty fun build to do. If you don't have Hologram, that one specific Joker, don't touch Magic Trick. There's no point. We now have Hieroglyph, and I'm going to put this in good buys. Losing a hand is pretty darn detrimental to your runs at all levels. However, being able to go back a whole ante and just allow yourself some more run-up time to those big bosses, it could be the difference between winning and losing. It's a big hindrance, but at the same time, if you know when to use this voucher, I think it's a good buy. Um, it takes a little bit to get used to understanding where exactly you are in a Palacho run, but I think once you've played the game a bit, and I think this is a very, very good voucher for veteran players, um, for newer players, I would argue it can be misused very easily, but once you understand that's like, okay, I'm looking at my jokers, I'm not going to be able to really get buy next ante i know i'm gonna lose a hand which is gonna hurt me but i think going back and just gain three more shops gain a little bit more economy getting some you know skippable tags or being able to increase my obelisk or throwback joker or hologram you know uh something that's you're working on increasing the x mole or additive mole then this voucher is very good and there's time and a place for it but you have to know when i also think of course this voucher is great for personal best runs because you just want more time to build up the exact jokers and exact hand you want in the same way petroglyph i would actually argue is almost a must buy because losing a discard yes is not ideal but going back around for just a discard is a much better deal than going back around for losing a hand so i think this is if, if you've used hieroglyph petroglyph is a fantastic voucher to see in the shop and i pretty much grab it every single time because i am absolutely willing to sacrifice a discard to go back and ante and have all those shops to have more economy to have more time to build up the jokers i need to there's been one or two times i decided not to because my run was in such a good place i knew i could cruise to the boss line but most of the time this is a much better trade-off than losing a hand and there's less math involved i think nine times out of ten you're probably just like oh yeah this is a good joker to grab unless your run is in a spot to complete at that point we now have director's cut and i would put in good buys i think being able to re-roll a boss blind is absolutely useful and there's times where if i had ten dollars and i would have had director's cut it would have saved a run that probably would have ended up winning so there's 
times where this voucher is just absolutely necessary. I just find it a lot of times where you don't have the economy to quite spend on this voucher and then you have to spend 10 whole dollars to then also reroll the boss blind, but it is a good buy and again, you just have to know when to buy it and you have to be in a good economic place, I think, to buy this voucher in the first place. However, I think it's partner in retcon it's just not worth it yes of course if you have a huge economy and you can just spend on whatever go ahead and buy this so you can re-roll the boss blinds as many times as you need to get the exact boss blind you want but generally speaking you just need to re-roll it once there's usually only one or two boss blinds that are specifically to kill your exact run if you can afford to re-roll it once you're good if you need this voucher your economy is either in a fantastic place and you probably should be fine no matter what or you're not in a good place and i can't see how you could really afford to re-roll enough times to get the exact boss bind you would need to move on all in all i really think you just need to re-roll once i don't think the upgrade version is necessary finally we have paintbrush going into one of the best vouchers having increased increased hand size is super valuable in bellatro one, because there's a lot of things you could do with cards in your hand that, you know, just add to the benefits of playing. So you could have steel cards, you could have gold cards, and then there's mine, which re-triggers. There's also seals that benefit from having your hand. And then there's the fact that you're fishing for the exact hand you want. Just having more cards available to you is a very easy way to fish for the hand that you need. All in all, paintbrush is super crucial, and I don't think hand size should be underrated in this game. There's a reason that the Painter's deck is one of the best decks in the game despite losing a whole Joker slot. Having that extra two hand size is huge. It makes the game a lot easier. Along those lines, Palette. I mean, if I got Paintbrush, I'm still buying Palette every single time it comes up. It is extraordinarily valuable. Don't underrate hand size. There's so many reasons why you want your hand to be big whether it's fishing for certain cards, whether it's to use, you know, in-hand enhancements, whether it's just to build your economy with some gold jokers. There's a bunch of reasons to increase your hand size, and these are vouchers you should be picking up, I think, every single time they come in the shop if you can afford it. And there's oftentimes I've sold jokers just to increase my hand size because I think it's that valuable. Um, looking at my tier list now, I mean, I really want to move Tarot Merchant down. I'm not going to. <laughs> I already committed to that decision, but I definitely think this one should be at the end. But let me know what you think of my tier list. Make your own tier list down below. I'll have a link to this uh, customizable template in the description. Comment down below where I messed up, what, <laughs> what placements you absolutely hate, what placements you agree with. Hit the like button if you like this video. Dislike if you didn't. Hit subscribe if you've been enjoying the content. And don't forget to hit up my streams. I stream... Monday through Thursday, 3.30 to 6.30 Pacific time, and also on Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. So hope to see you there. Hope you've been enjoying the content, and we'll see you next time.